Physiology of pain. Pain is a sign of weakness leaving the body. That's an old Marine Corps slogan. And something uh, our head trainer at UTEP used to put a sign on her, bot on her door about that. And it's just kind of something you can say to an uh, athlete that uh, maybe they're a little sore, not feeling too good beginning of the year. It's just a sign of weakness leaving the body. But um, today's lecture, we're really going to talk about the actual and anatomical and physiological uh, ways that we feel pain and, and ways that we can uh, modulate that pain. So pain, what is that? It's an unpleasant sensation with emotional aspects associated with actual or potential tissue damage. So anytime you get any kind of, it hurt, the type of pain um, that you feel and even some of the emotional aspects associated with that pain, usually with actual or potential tissue damage. Function of pain, it protects the, the reason we have pain is it protects the body against further injury, warns the body that something is wrong, and what that does is it m evokes muscle spasm. And the muscle spasm is sort of the body's way of, uh, of uh, splinting an area. Also guides functional recovery. So we use pain sort of to determine uh, when to progress people through uh, rehab or when to hold them back or when they can start going back to activities or when we need to keep them out of activities. And it may enhance disability. This is mostly dealt with in chronic or persistent pain. Um, and you know, in our setting, in the athletic training room, probably won't see that as much as in like a clinical setting or a hospital setting. So what are some types of pain? Uh, the first is acute. Usually this is sudden onset. Um, usually lasts last less than six months. Underlying pathology is, is easily identified. Usually um, they can tell you I was running and stepped off the curb and felt a pop and now it really hurts. It's usually well localized and defined and associated with tissue damage. And most of the time the acute pain will subside with tissue healing. Persistent or chronic pain is long duration extends beyond normal recovery time. Um, typically t the textbook answer is uh, over m longer than six months, but I mean you, you could technically probably call someone uh, chronic uh, pain or persistent pain even if they've had it for two to three months. May or may not signal continued tissue damage. Um, usually activation of dysfunctional neurological or psychological responses. People um, usually may lose feeling in an area and have psychological responses, things like depression, um, anger, trouble sleeping, things like that. Uh, history of treatment failures, you know, these people will come to you, they've tried a lot of different things and nothing's helping. Uh, again, some common side effects are depression, anger, frustration, um, decreased activity level, getting out of shape, things like that, and decreased sleep. We have referred pain, which is experience of pain in one area when the actual potential tissue damage is in another. Usually this is deep, dull, and achy pain, and it's due to non-specific nerve root distribution. So as the nerve converges at the spinal cord, the excitability affects nerves at the same distribution. So people who have uh, the signs of a heart attack are that radiating pain down, uh, down your jaw or on your left side. That leads us to radiating pain, which is pain that shoots from an area of injury to an area that is uninjured. And the pain radiates due to nerve root injury or injury to the trunk that nerviates that area. Yeah. Usually specific to the nerve root distribution. So, uh, someone has an injured injury in their back, their a lower back, uh, the L5. Usually they'll have pain shooting down their their leg. Usually sharper, more intense, and usually associated with parathesis or trouble, uh, decreased movement. Now it's pain assessment. This is how, we, how do we assess the type of pain and the severity of the pain. And it's important to do this to assess the quantity and the quality of the pain. The first way is pretty easy. It's the numeric pain scale. It's quick and easy, but and easy to remember, but it is very subjective. Basically what you're doing is you're saying, uh, trying to rate the pain, one being hardly any pain to 10 being the worst possible pain you've ever been in. And I say it's very subjective because 
you know, what may be a 9 for one person may be a 3 for another. So you've got to really know your patient. The visual analog scale is a little more subjective. Um, you'll see this usually at hospitals or in a doctor's office. And it's kind of, they actually write out the pain scale 1 to 10 and give you sort of a, 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 um, a category for that pain. And it's still pretty objective, but a little bit more, or, excuse me, still pretty subjective, but a little bit more objective. You also see this in a doctor's office, a pain chart used to determine the location and quality of the pain. And it's just a, a, a figure of a person and you just kind of circle where you're having your pain. This, this also helps you determine radiating pain. Um, you can also use PQRST, which is um, a way of just remembering uh, the questions to ask when you're writing out your notes. So P stands for provocation what what how did the injury occur what is the activities increase or decrease your pain Q stands for quality or characteristic of the pain R referral or radiation S severity of the pain and T timing when does pain occur so you, the goals for your treatment of pain should be obviously to resolve the pathology or what's wrong to modify the perception of pain and to maximize the function of of that person and that area. So some anatomy, uh, neurons are basically your nerve cells. And they consist of several things, the cell body, which is the body of the cell, the, 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 um, the axon, which is down here, or excuse me, is the tail right here, and dendrites, okay? This is the axon terminal, so this is kind of where the tail leads off into these different areas. The dendrite these are these kind of branch looking things. And basically, uh, what you have here is on the axon, uh, cells can be classified as malinated or unmalinated. And what this is is just a fibrous sheath that runs along these the axon. And what happens is um, the pain is really a chemical reaction that causes a uh, electrical charge. This charge is picked up or the chemicals are picked up and translated and it turns into an electrical charge. And then this charge can jump into these little spaces right here and this really speeds up the transmission so it's more quick. If your axon does not have these malin sheaths then it has to travel down that pathway down the axon all the way and so it takes a little longer. Um, these malin sheaths are uh, the spaces are called the nodes of Ranvier and the cells that make up these sheaths are Schwann cells.